called my father this morning. He said, I'm still on the throne. Yes, sir. And I'm still in control. Yeah, I know yeah. that's right. No matter what's going on in the world, he said, I got this. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And he reminded me of what my brother, his son, said okay. in the Sermon on the Mount. He said something about not worrying. Yes, sir. Yeah. So while the devil wants to convince me to be scared and yeah. be apprehensive, yeah, lose my mind, I choose to do what my father says. Yes, sir. Yeah. Carol and I adopted a little, what do you call those things when you match the letters? WPT, wash, pray, and trust. Yes, sir. That's right. That's it. That's good. We, in Bible class on Sunday mornings, we're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, known as the book of faith. faith. Yes, sir. And it's quite a bit hypocritical to say, yes, I have faith in God, <laughs> on the one hand, yeah. and then worry ourselves sick <laughs> over something that's beyond our control. Yes, yes, sir. I have to believe that whatever God's will is, whatever. if it's God's will for me to leave this earth next week as a result of this virus or anything else. Yeah. Hallelujah anyway. Amen. Amen. I believe God has a calendar. Mm -hmm. And on that calendar there are two dates for each of us. Yes, sir. One is the birth date. Yeah. And the other is the death date. Yes. And I don't think there's any force in this life that's going to change either one. Yeah. Any force but God. So I rest fully in him. I'm asked a lot of questions about this thing, and I, I choose not to engage in endless babble yeah. about this. Yes, sir. My response is do what we should be doing all along. Trust Have faith in God. Yes, brother, trust in God. You have no doubt heard the word favor used. Yes, sir. Among church folk. He's got favor. She's got favor. We've got favor. And usually it's said when something good happens to somebody. You move into that new house. Oh, you all got favor. It's usually said when something positive in a material way happens to someone. Usually we associate favor with material prosperity. Yeah. That's what man has to say about favor, but what does the Bible say about favor? I didn't do it, I promise. What does God say about favor? First, let's define favor. The word simply means preferred treatment. It's like the word favor right or favorite. Yeah. We all have a favorite color. We all have a preferred color. We have a favorite food. We have a preferred food. We have a favorite outfit. We have a preferred outfit. We have favorite children. No, we don't. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we ain't supposed to, but we know good and well. This one over here, that will cause our blood pressure to go up like this one. We love them all. I'd be lying if I said didn't have favorites. Remember Joseph, young Joseph. His father had 12 sons. Joseph was daddy's favorite son. That became problematic, but... Jacob had a favorite, and his name was Joseph. He made him, you know, the story, the coat of many, many colors. Yes. There's a woman in the Bible named Salome, mm -hmm. her husband Zebedee. She was the mother of James and John. She asked Jesus, she said, hey, Jesus, I want you to do me a favor. Yeah. I want, of all your disciples, I want you to make my boys your favorites. Yeah. 
I want you to cast favor on them. And basically what she said, forget about the mother dude. I, Jesus, I want you to make mine your favorite. Now, we are all God's children, but does God have favorites among his children? Does God have those whom he shows special favor? Does God prefer some of his children over others? I don't believe he does, but I believe he prefers the behavior of some of his children over the behavior of others. I believe he prefers the character of some of his children over others. I believe he prefers the level of devotion in some of his children over others. See, unlike us, you know, we, we, we got that one child who, ooh, ooh. <laughs> well, God is able to love beyond that, to love that. Do you know that God loved Judas as much as he loved Peter or John or James? Yeah. Knowing what he was going to do. But God has that ability to love beyond that. Now, there are things he loved more about Peter's character, James's character, than Judas. God is able to make that distinction. Remember now, there was a woman who washed Jesus' feet. She was at the house of Simon the Pharisee. And when Simon saw the woman washing Jesus' feet, in his mind he said, if Jesus knew who this chick was, because she had a very, very sinful reputation. Yeah. And he's thinking if Jesus knew who this was that was touching him, he wouldn't even have her come near him. Jesus, knowing what he was thinking, said, Simon, since I came into your house, you showed me no love. But this woman, since I came in here, she's been washing my feet with her tears and with her hair. Simon, a Pharisee, a leader among God's people, and Jesus rebuked him and considered this woman, this sinful woman, yeah. to be more favorable than Simon. Parents love all their children. We have favorites when it comes to certain behavior and certain conduct. The Bible, or oh, you've heard, this individual is blessed and highly favored. Where did that come from? Or you are blessed and highly favored. Luke chapter 1, verse 28. The angel appeared to Mary. Greetings. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you and you are blessed. Now, we've managed to take that out of that passage and put that blessed and highly favored on so many people who don't deserve it. Mary deserved it. This was an angel of the Lord who told her she was blessed and highly favored. The, the angel brought her good news. You will be the mother of our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, that was good news on the one hand, but it was scandalous. It had scandalous implications because she was not a married woman. She was a virgin. And if she starts walking around pregnant, she'd instantly be known as a loose woman. She would be shamed in that society. She'd be an outcast in that society. And knowing that, Mary still said, Lord, not my will, but thine That's right. be done. Sometimes God lays a pathway before us that looks undesirable, that looks questionable, that may even be threatening. And we've got to ask ourselves, can we, like Mary, say, God, not my will, but thy. I don't care what they think about me, God. I'm going to do your will, come what may. Now, just because Mary was blessed and highly favored doesn't mean you are blessed and highly favored. Now, I know we throw that around, but just because Mary was does not mean you are. God's special favor doesn't rest on just anybody for any reason. God's special favor rests on special people in order to accomplish God's divine purpose. For example, Abraham, James in his book, chapter 2, he says, Was not our father Abraham considered 
righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar. You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now watch this. And because of that, God said, that's my friend right there. Amen. God called Abraham friend. Amen. That's not something that he called everybody. Yeah. Abraham was special and had a special relationship with God. He believed God could do what he promised. Amen. He believed God would do what he promised. And that kind of faith caused Abraham to have favor yeah. with God. That's right. yeah. Wouldn't you like for God to call you mm. friend? He distinguished Abraham from everybody. He didn't call nobody else that. Distinguished Abraham from everybody else. What about our brother Joseph? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the Bible says we are to praise God in all circumstances. That's a whole lot easier said than done. Joseph is the prime example of praising God in all circumstances. Joseph praised God in everything. He praised God when he was rejected by his own family. He praised God when his brothers put a hit out on him. When they conspired to kill him. Joseph praised God anyway. Joseph praised God when he was accused of a crime he did not commit. Joseph praised God when he was thrown in prison for a crime he did not commit. Joseph was special and had a special relationship with God because he praised God in good times yeah. and in bad times as well. It's easy to praise God when things are going good. Yeah. There shall be showers of blessing. It's easy to praise God when we're standing in that new house. Woo! God show is good. We got God's favor. Yeah. It's easy to praise God when we lean them up against that new car. Yeah. Ooh. But when we got that car... With smoke blowing out the engine, the hood is up. It's 100 degrees in the summer. We're sweating. It's easy to forget yeah. to praise God yeah. under those circumstances. Matter of fact, where is God? Yeah. Why is it that I'm going through all this? Mm -hmm. The writer said, praise God in all circumstances, in bad as well as in good. That kind of praise caused Joseph to gain God's favor. Faith. What about Moses? God said through the prophet Isaiah, these are the people that I look on with favor. Those who are humble, those who are contrite in spirit, and those who tremble at my word. God loves humility. Remember, it was humility that caused Jesus to leave heaven and come to earth to die for you and your sins, for you and your sins, for me yes, sir. and my sins. It was humility that caused Jesus to leave the glory of heaven to come to this sin-filled earth. And that would have been enough by itself. But to take the blame for your sin, to take the blame for my sin, it was humility that caused Jesus to do it. That's why God said, these are the folk I like. Those who are filled with humility. Now, Numbers chapter 12. The Bible says that Moses was a very humble man. <clears throat> Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. He was more humble than anyone on the face mm. of the earth. Mm. Does God have favorites? Yeah, he does. More humble than anyone on the face of the earth. Of the earth. And humility is one of those things that Satan uses to separate God's people from him. Yeah. Because pride is something that we all have. We just got to make sure we keep it in check. Yeah. Like that pit bull I got out back. <laughs> got to keep him in check. All of us. And Satan knows that we have it. That's what caused Grandma Eve to do what she did. And break off a little piece for grandfather Adam 
And everybody that sinned after that mm -hmm. has that same problem as Adam and Eve with pride. That's why God loves humility. Yes. You know who today have some of the biggest problems with humility? Jesus. You're looking at it. <laughs> Preachers. Leaders mm -hmm. of God's people. Watch them, y'all. Exodus chapter 33, verse 17. God told Moses, you have found favor yeah. in my sight. And he said, I have known you by name. Wouldn't you like for God to talk to you that way? God, I know Moses by name. Does God know all of our names? Yeah, he does. Yeah. But he makes a big deal of knowing Moses by name because of his humility. Numbers chapter 12, Miriam and Aaron. They got it in their heads that they wanted to argue with Moses. And so here they are, arguing with Moses. And God says, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Wait a second. Yeah. You ever in court and the defense and the prosecution get to arguing with each other? And the judge does this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Order in the court. That's what God did when Miriam and Aaron were going after Moses. Mm -hmm. God said, hold on, hold on. Let me explain to you, too, who you're talking to. Yeah. You ain't just talking to anybody. You're talking to Moses. He's my man. That's the kind of favor that Moses had with God. God had to put them in check, so much so that Moses even said, God, please lighten up on them. Go easy on them, God. That's because Moses had favor with God. Wouldn't you like for God to say about you, that you are more humble than anybody on the earth. Yeah. You know when we pray and ask God for blessings that usually have dollar signs through it? Mm -hmm. That's the kind of blessings I want. God, what we should not be. This is the kind of blessing that we should be asking Amen. for. Yeah. Asking God to give us the spirit of Jesus. Yeah. The spirit of humility. The spirit that would help us get to heaven. What about David? Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. David, a man after God's own heart. David said, he's a man who will do my will. Somebody says, well, didn't David have some sin in his life? Yeah, he did. Just like the person you look at in the mirror every day. No different. But his heart was like the heart of God. Yeah. How can his heart be like the heart of God if he's got sin in it? The same way you can. Teach. You love God, don't you? I know you do. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. Yeah. And yet you sin against him over and over and over again. Mm. Just like I do. Mm -hmm. See how God works with those who are sinful just like David? Mm -hmm. Easy to look at David. Liar, deceiver, hypocrite, adulterer, murderer. You mean this dude is a man after God's own heart? The person we look at in the mirror every day, just as guilty as David. Yeah. And yet, God's favor was on him because his heart was like the heart of God. Yeah. Isn't it good that God doesn't count our sins against us? Yeah. Yeah. Psalms chapter 103, he removes our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. Hebrews chapter 8, our sins and transgressions he will remember no more. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us. Not from some sin, but from oh, all yeah. sin. You know, even the one where we promised God we would never do it again. Yeah. And then we promised him, I, I mean it this time, God, I won't do it again. And then we say, no, God, I really, really, really mean it this time. You know, we didn't need to stop saying that. Yeah. And accept the fact that as we walk in the light, yes. the blood of Jesus cleanses us Amen. from our sins. First John chapter 2, he said, I write these things down. So that you will not sin. Don't want you to sin. But if you do. I don't 
don't want you to sin. But if you do, you have an advocate with the Father. He said, if you do, he said, I got a defense attorney that's waiting on you. He's already paid for. He's on retainer. So that if you do sin, for me, he might as well have wrote, when you do sin. Because I'm trifling like that. <laughs> He's got a defense attorney waiting to argue your case before the judge. And you know the defense attorney and the judge, they related. Their father and son. Isn't that kind of, would you like to go to court where your defense attorney is the son of the judge? That's what we've got. Yeah. That's favor, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Glory. Psalms chapter 32. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Yeah. Blessed, blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them. Just think about your sin. Blessed is the one. God don't count it against you. Thank you. Now, does that mean, oh, God ain't got to we got him get my sin on? No. God forbid. That's right. But if we are walking in the light, we are walking in God's favor. And he does not count our sin against us. So how do we gain God's favor? To gain God's favor, we must be favorable. We must be favorable. That means we must live our lives in a manner that pleases God. Yeah. God said, these are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble, those who are contrite in spirit, and those who tremble at my word. Yeah. God loves humility. Yeah. God loves those who recognize, God, it ain't about me. It's all about you. Not my will, God, but yours be done. Those who are contrite in spirit, those who have remorse for their sin, so much so that we hate sin, so much so that we cannot be comfortable with sin. Those are the one God loves. And those are the ones who receive God's favor. But then he said those who tremble at God's holiness. Those who fear and revere God. You know, he's not the man upstairs. No, he is a holy God. Yeah, he right. is God Almighty. Yeah. But God's favor doesn't always look the way we think. Remember, man tends to associate God's favor with material things. Some desire God's favor in the same way we ask a friend to do us a favor. That's what Salome had in mind when she said, I want you to make my son's your favorite. But there's a difference between, hey, do me a favor, and God, I want your favor. God's favor is having his providential care. That's my new word for the week. Providence. God's providential care. For well, those who are visitors, when I learn a new word, I got to share it with the church so I can look impressive. God's providential care means God's presence and God's provision which enable us to accomplish his divine purpose for our lives. Yes. Yes. That's what that big word means. It means God helping us to do what he wants us to do. Yeah. Now contrary to popular belief, God's favor is not intended for our comfort. It's a nice thought, but it's not a biblical thought. God's favor is not intended for our comfort. Remember Joseph when he was locked up in prison? When he had God's favor? God didn't release him from prison right then. He stayed in prison. But he had God's favor. The lesson for you and me, God may leave us in a difficult situation. Yeah, yeah. He never promised that he'd free us from everyone. But we still have his favor. Yeah. Remember the Apostle Paul? We know he had God's favor. God allowed him to see heaven. Yeah. And yet God afflicted his body. Yeah. 
He had God's favor, but life wasn't easy for him. He was in pain all of his days. I'd love to see heaven, but sometimes I want it. God, if that's what will come with it, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. Show me it in the end, God. He had God's favor, but he did not have that comfort. God's favor does not mean God's comfort. Remember Jesus in Gethsemane? Yeah. He was in agony. He had God's favor, but he was still in agony. And we know as he hung on the cross, agonizing, in pain, dying by himself, mm -hmm. full of God's favor, mm. but he didn't have God's comfort at that moment. Contrary to popular belief, God's favor is not intended for our convenience. It's a nice thought. It'd be a better message to preach, but I'd be lying to you if I said that was true. That's right. God's favor is not intended for our convenience. Jesus said, anyone who wants to be my disciple, Jeez. my follower, yeah. must do what? Deny yourself. Yeah. Put yourself, your wishes, your wants, put that out of the way. Pick up your cross. What are you saying, Jesus? It's going to be a rough road. There's going to be some difficulties. But Jesus, I, I've got your favor on me. There's still going to be some difficulties. God's favor was not intended for our convenience. That whole daily cross thing. That's what Jesus said we got to go through. Yeah. One songwriter said, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. And then, contrary to popular belief, God's favor is not intended for our compensation. Hmm. Now, we're big on that one. We're big on that compensation, whether it be from, from an insurance check or whatever it is. Woo! God sure showed you favor. I ain't got nothing to do with God's favor. We like to think that. Wait for that settlement check. Woo! God's favor show on you. How can, I, how can I be down? How can I get some of that? We like for God to, 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 to make it rain. We complain about this rain, but we want God to make it rain. Now, y'all should know what that means. <laughs> Somebody showed me that on the way to church this morning. God's favor was not intended for our compensation. Jesus said, Paul said, our lives should not be focused on money, material things, the things of this world. God's favor was intended to supply us, to strengthen us, to sustain us, so that we may carry out his divine purposes for our lives. Yeah. Next time you hear somebody talking about God's favor, remember this. Mm -hmm. A lot of good things happen to us in this life. Mm -hmm. Don't mean we have God. God's favor. Mm. God's favor is about that which is spiritual, not that which is material. If this morning... You desire the prayers of the church for God's favor, not for your physical well-being as much as your spiritual well-being. If that's your desire, please make it known while we stand.